Hi, I'm Mike Grunwald from Levine Cancer Institute of Atrium Health in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I specialize in leukemias, including myeloproliferative neoplasms, as well as transplant and cellular therapy. And today I'm here to tell you about our abstract, which is from the REVEAL study, looking at progression, disease progression to myelofibrosis in patients with polycythemia vera. The REVEAL study is a prospective multi-center observational trial that evaluated 2,510 patients with polycythemia vera and observed them over a course of at least three years as they received usual care. And we looked for signs of progression to myelofibrosis in this population. First, we filtered out the patients whom we truly thought had a diagnosis of PV among the 2,510 patients. And it turned out that approximately 80% of patients were patients whom we thought confidently, we confidently thought had a diagnosis of polycythemia vera. So using that 80% or so of the entire reveal population, we looked for risk factors for progression to myelofibrosis. And what we observed was that there were, there were five identifiable risk factors. One was elevated white blood cell count or leukocytosis. The second was time from PV diagnosis to enrollment in the REVEAL study, so essentially duration of time with polycythemia vera. The third was a history of thromboembolism, so a history of uh, blood clots. The fourth one was elevated variant allele frequency, and that was specific to the patients for whom we had a biospecimen available, which was most patients. We, we looked at the variant allele frequency and that did correlate with progression to myelofibrosis. And then finally, hematocrit less than or equal to 45. And that was a little bit surprising, the fact that hematocrit less than or equal to 45 was associated with disease progression. And it turned out that hematocrit the hematocrits that were lower associated with other disease features that were risk factors for progression. So there were some confounders in looking at lower hematocrits. And so what is the impact of all this, the, these identifiable risk factors for progression from PV to myelofibrosis? Well, I think now that, we, now that we know these risk factors, we can observe patients more closely who display these risk factors and see if they're developing to myelofibrosis, maybe these patients should have more frequent blood counts, maybe they should be seen more frequently. In addition, as we witness more drug development in this area, and we get a better understanding of which agents can either delay or reverse the progression of disease, we can identify candidates for these therapies that might delay or um, delay or prevent the progression of disease.